Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to concern mathematical induction. Before we actually do a problem, let me first establish what the main idea is. Let's say that you were given a sequence like this, and you were to determine the next two numbers in this sequence. Then what you would try to do is you would try to establish what the pattern is. You haven't been told what this pattern is, so it's you are left to up to your own devices to figure it out. Then, after you determine that pattern, then you would say, oh, okay, I know the pattern now, and then you would apply that pattern to try to reach a conclusion, in this case being, what are those two numbers? Now, in this particular case, the pattern is that you simply add the first, the previous two values to get the subsequent values. So, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 3 is 5, and so on. Well, that's really all there is to mathematical induction. What you're going to do is you're going to determine the pattern and then use that pattern to reach a conclusion. Except the way we're going to do it is this. You're going to be told what the pattern is, but then you just simply have to prove that that's the pattern. Let's take this one for example. Say you were to prove that if you were to total these numbers, and this by the way would be the nth number, then the solution to this sum would equal to this formula. So if you wanted to find, say, the sum of the first 10 numbers, you would add these 10 numbers together, or you can just simply plug in 10 for n. Now, there are basically three steps to this. The first step is to determine the sum of one numbers, the sum of two numbers, and the sum of three numbers. The sum of one numbers, basically nine, is equal to the same thing as you plugging one in, and that checks. What about two numbers? Well, the two numbers, the first two numbers in this are nine and eleven. If you total nine and eleven, that's the same thing as you plugging two into the formula. That checks. Likewise, for three numbers, nine, eleven, and thirteen, the answer gives you the same thing as plugging in three into the formula. So, so far, this formula is working. However, in order to declare victory and say, yes, that's the formula, we would have to prove that this is true for every single natural number in existence. While we can't reach that conclusion yet, we've at least established what the pattern is. So now let's walk this out a little bit further without actually doing the work. We're going to make an assumption that we've walked this out a long, long way. And since we, it is better to choose a number that's not definite, we'll say that that number is k. So we'll assume that we've walked this out to k numbers. I suppose it would be easier just to actually pick a number and say, hey, we went out a thousand numbers. The problem with that, though, is that we've actually defined a value for it, meaning that we've defined up to a thousand, but then we haven't shown for anything after a thousand. So if we pick a number like, say, k, where it's not definite, then it can be any number in the natural number system. So, if we go out k numbers here, that means that this answer will equal the same thing as us plugging k into it, just as we did up here, only for 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so now we've walked this out to however many numbers. I wrote a thousand here, but you kind of get the idea. A lot of numbers. Now, what we want to do is we want to prove that it's true for any number that comes after. Now, if you walked it out to a thousand, then we would be trying to prove that it works also for a thousand and one. Now, once we do that, that's really it, except you've shown it for a thousand and one. If you choose an arbitrary number like k, and then you show it's true for k plus one, since we haven't actually put our finger on what k is, then that means that we can pretty much define any number and the number that comes after it. And because of that, that would finish off the problem. We've proven that it works for any and all numbers. Now a few things. First of all, this value here is like the last term in this series. And basically what this is, this defines each term within a sequence. So this is a sequence formula. a sub n is equal to 2n plus 7. If you wanted to find the third number in which you would add, you would plug in 3 and this would give you 13. If you wanted to find the fourth number, 15, then what you do is you plug in 4, 
2 times 4 plus 7 is 15. So this will give you any value within the series here in which you are to add. This formula that you see over here, though, is the sum formula. So if we were to plug in a value into here, we would be finding the total for the first however many numbers. The question is, though, is does this formula actually work? That's what we're trying to show. So back to here. Again, if you plug in a number here, you'll find out which term it is. So if we plug in, say, 4, we get 15. However, if we plug in, say, k, then we get 2 times k plus 7. So this would be the kth term. Likewise, if you plug in k plus 1 for n, then you get 2 times k plus 1 plus 7, which is the k plus first term. And that's what we're going to need here. Recall that we're assuming that we've walked it out this far. If we add the first k numbers, what we get is this answer. So this is the sum of the first k numbers. Now what we want to do is this. We want to add the next term. If you were to add on just one more term to that answer, then what would the sum be? We want the sum to be this. If we can show that this is true, then we're finished. By the way, if you're wondering where this value comes from, this comes from plugging in k plus 1 into n. Remember, to find the sum of the first however many numbers, like say 1,000, you plug in 1,000. So if you wanted to find the 1,000 and first, then what you would do is you would plug in 1,001 to find out the sum of the first 1,001 numbers. Since we have the sum of the first k numbers here, if you add one more term, do you get the sum of the first k plus 1 numbers? In other words, is it the same thing as you plugging in k plus 1 into the formula? That's what we want to show. If you're looking for a formula to grasp at, this would be it. This is what you would like to show. Show that s sub k plus a sub k plus 1, which is the k plus first term, show that that total equals to the same thing as the sum of the first k plus 1 numbers. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. Let's first simplify the left-hand side of this. This gives us k squared plus 8k. This gives us 2k plus 2 plus 7. Collect your like terms and you get k squared plus 10k plus 9. Now a word of note, you are not to treat this like an equation, so you don't subtract from both sides or anything like that. This is a proof, which means you basically work each side independently, and then eventually you want to show that the left side is equal to the right. So this is about as simplified as it gets. Let's do the same thing now to this right-hand side. This is k plus 9. Let's go ahead and multiply this together, or FOIL, and we get k squared plus 10k plus 9. So same thing. Therefore, the formula works. And because of that, we are finished. OK, let's try another one. Let's go ahead and prove this formula here on the right is equal to the sum of these values. Recall that step one is to prove that it works for the sum of one numbers, two numbers, and three numbers. So if you plug in one, your answer should be the same thing as you adding the first one numbers, which being two. If you plug in two here for n, the answer should be the same thing as you adding the first two values. Plug in three, and the answer works for, to give you the first three values. So we've done that. They all check. So now we assume that we've walked it out to k values. So the, the sum of the first k numbers is equal to the same thing as us plugging in k into the formula. So now, all we got to do is show that it works for any number that comes after k. Now a few reminders. This is the nth term in a sequence. So if you were to plug in 3, you would get the third number that you would add in the series. If you were to plug in 4, you would get the fourth number in this series, namely 54. 
So if you plug in k, you would get the kth term. And if you plug in k plus 1, you get the k plus first term, which is what I'm showing you here. So remember, this is the sum of the first k numbers. If we take that sum and then we add the next term, do we get the same thing as us plugging in k plus 1 into the formula? That's what we want to find out. If we can prove that, then we're done. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll simplify the left-hand side first, then we'll simplify the right-hand side next. For this one here, I'm going to put a 1 in front, so it's 1 times 3 to the k. You'll find out why in a moment. This part here simplifies, so k plus 1 minus 1 just gives you k. Now, adding these two together gives us 3 times 3 to the k, and here is why. Let's say we take those two terms together, and this is what you get. Now, if you factor out 3 to the k, you get this. Now, keep in mind that if this doesn't make sense, you can always distribute it back. If you distribute it back, you'll wind up with this. So, what you have then is 1 plus 2 is 3. So, all you're doing really is collecting like terms. The way you want to think of it is if you have, say, instead of 1 times 3 to the k and 2 times 3 to the k, it's like having 1x and 2x. So, if you were to collect those together, you'd get 3x. And then, of course, there's the minus 1. Now, a reminder. Remember, we want this to simplify to give us this answer. This answer comes from the idea that if we plug in k plus 1 in for n, we get the sum of the first k plus 1 numbers. So, we want this to look exactly the same as this. Now, by the way, this has a 1 power. Recall that one property of exponents is that if you multiply two values that have the same base, you would just simply add their exponents. So if you have 1 added to k, what you get is k plus 1. So therefore, that's it. We now know that this formula works for any value of n.